Alan, you've been working now in cosmology for almost 30 years, have created the most critical theory of inflation, which ex explains how the universe developed as we know it. When, when you step back from all of this and begin to think of the remarkable accomplishments that you and your colleagues, both theoretical and observational, have made during this time, what, what do you think about? What, what is the meaning of what you're doing for yourself and, and for humanity? Okay. Um, well, first of all, let me just say that um, I think one of the lessons that one learns early on when one starts to think about cosmology uh, is that the universe is unbelievably large, and by any comparison, we are therefore unbelievably small. Uh, there are a hundred billion stars in our own galaxy. There are a hundred billion such galaxies in the observable universe. Uh, and if this theory called inflation is right, there are probably an uh, unbelievable number of pocket universes as large as what we observe or vastly larger. In fact, the number is even very likely infinite. Um, that certainly means that any importance that we have uh, has to be an importance that we give to our own lives. Uh, we can't look to the cosmos uh, to find uh, the importance of human civilization. We certainly learn something about the history of human civilization by looking to the cosmos, uh, but I don't think the cosmos itself contains anything uh, that will establish our importance. Uh, I don't think this at all, however, means that we're not important, uh, but I think it means we have to recognize that uh, the seeds of our importance lie within ourselves and not in any external uh, object or source of power. What has uh, always uh, impressed me and almost uh, uh, made me uh, a quiver is the fact that all of this knowledge has been achieved in what? Uh, 5,000 years of recorded history, and, and how much science? I mean, really, it's only 400 years of science, and even in the last century, uh, we've advanced so much. Uh, I mean, 150 years ago, people thought the whole, everything that existed was a couple thousand light years or so. Hmm. But, but all of this happened so fast. It, it, That's it, right. Less than an eye blink in, 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 the, in the totality of universal time. That's I mean, absolutely right. There, there's, to me, there's something in that. There's something... Yeah, no, I completely agree. The other side of the story that I want to get to is, is that I think uh, cosmology is, I think, a tremendous exhilaration from the point of view of appreciating the power of human thought. And here I'm certainly not talking about my own contribution of inflation. Inflation was built, built on top of a vast body of physics and astronomy that has been built up by our civilization as a whole by many individuals. Uh, and I think it's mind-boggling uh, how successful uh, the enterprise has been. Uh, when I first proposed inflation uh, back in 1980, um, we discovered, I guess, in 1982 that inflation made definite predictions for the non-uniformities that we thought should be seen in the cosmic background radiation. Uh, at the time, I was one of the people doing these calculations, not the only one. Uh, at the time we were doing these calculations, I didn't think there was any chance in the world that these very minute variations in the intensity of the cosmic background radiation uh, would ever be seen. Um, to give you an idea of how hard this is, uh, the intensity of radiation is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. Uh, the temperature of the cosmic background radiation is three degrees Kelvin. The walls of this room are 300 degrees Kelvin, uh, so it's 100 times as hot in this room as the temperature of the cosmic background radiation. That means the intensity of the radiation is 100 million times more. Uh, that is, the intensity of the radiation coming off of that black wall over there is 100 million times more than the intensity of the radiation in the cosmic background radiation. Yet, the astronomers can detect this cosmic background radiation, and they can even detect variations of this cosmic back background radiation, which are the order of one part in 100,000 of the intensity of the radiation. Wow. And they can do that accurately. It's unbelievable. I find it completely unbelievable. It's really a tour de force of modern science and technology. Uh, it's fantastic. And then to see that the measurements they make actually agree uh, with the predictions of these theories, uh, I find just astounding. Uh, and I think it's a really a remarkable success of science that it was possible to predict these fluctuations, uh, the non-uniformities of the radiation, 
and then measure them and discover agreement. There are multiple examples of that astonishing level of, of, of human ability to discern. The work that you do on in inflation carries you back not to the first second of the universe uh, 13.7 billion years ago, an accuracy that by itself is fantastic, measured by diverse uh, 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 parameters that, that fit together. But you deal in the first incredible small part of a second, 10 to the minus 37th or minus 35th. I mean, time frames that are just unbelievable. Uh, that's right. And you do that's all right. that so casually, you get up in the morning. <laughs> well, when I started, it. it seemed absolutely absurd. Uh, the origin of most of these absurd numbers, by the way, uh, comes from the grand unified theories of particle physics on which this cosmology is based. Uh, and those numbers, in turn, come from thinking about the three different kinds of particle interactions that we see mm -hmm. in particle experiments. Uh, what particle physics discovered back around 1980, uh, was that if you look at those three different kinds of interactions, all the interactions we see can be described by three different types. If you extrapolate them to high energies, when you get to energies of 10 to the 16 GeV, 10 to the 16 times as much as the energy equivalent of a single proton, all three interactions have the same strength. And that's the origin of these grand unified theories, the idea that really is one interaction that's, in order to see the unification, you have to go to that very high energy. And it's that very high energy that drives all of these other crazy numbers. And it's mind-boggling. Um, it's a vast extrapolation from what we see. But nonetheless, there are pieces of it that we can measure. Uh, and those pieces seem to confirm that the picture fits together. And what's equally remarkable is that the way this works is that you have to have take two different kinds of, of, of observations and theories. One are observational astronomers looking at the, mo the most massive things we can imagine I I in our perception, the size of the entire universe what is it, 10 to the 28th centimeters or something, and then you're taking particle physics, theoretical physics, experimental, dealing with the very smallest possible thing and 10 to the minus, uh, who knows, 14, 15 size in that, and, 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 and you're only able to explain the former, the great size of the universe, by understanding the latter, the, the, the quantum physics and the structure of this. Level. I mean, that unity is, is, is astounding. That's right, that's right. Uh, and I guess the history of that unity is that it began in the context of just understanding the production of the light chemical elements, connecting nuclear physics to cosmology back in the 40s is really where that work began. And I think it was successfully concluded or at least reached a successful situation in the 1970s. Uh, and then later, real particle physics got into it, talking about the forces that create the asymmetry between matter and antimatter and inflation, which takes us back to much higher energies and much deeper into uh, particle physics, to much smaller length scales on that side of the equation. And yeah, the amazing thing is that studying the very small over here connects hugely uh, to the vast uh, expanses that are probed by astronomy.